Good day everyone! So we're done on the first two topics, the legal basis and the AFP organization. In this video, we are going to proceed to our next topic, the military courtesy and discipline. So let's start with the definition of military discipline. Military discipline is the willingness to accept with conviction and without reservation the necessity for a common law that rules and coordinate the effort of a group. It is necessary to ensure orderly and effective group action, commonly known as teamwork. Many people think that discipline is nothing more than the enforcement of regulations and the corresponding punishment when one violates it. Others associate discipline as the state of subservience wherein a subordinate blindly follow his or his or her superior out of habit or fear. So normally, lagi natin ina-associate ang salitang pagdidisiplina sa word na pananakot, pangongontrol, o kung ano-ano pa. But then, discipline is the quality of being able to behave and work in a controlled way which involves obeying particular rules or standards. So meaning to say, ang disiplina ay pagtatama lamang ng mga bagay na dapat at hindi dapat na ginagawa mo. Kumbaga sa isang organization, lahat naman. Sa bahay, sa school, sa simbahan, and everything. So lahat naman, lagi tayong may mga rules and regulations na sinusunod. So discipline is highly important in military. Kasi uh, ang lahat ng kilos o ginagawa mo ay hindi lang basta ikaw yung nagre-reflect, nagre-reflect but then as a whole or as a group. At dahil nga yung kilos o galaw mo ay hindi lang basta sarili mo lang yung nagre-reflect but then as a whole or as a team, mahalaga na ikaw ay may disiplina in military. So, kailangan mong makiisa. Kailangan may teamwork to, to achieve its mission, its objective. So, sabi nga, teamwork is particularly important in military operations where its presence or lack of it may very well spell the difference between victory or defeat. So, kung wala kang disiplina, wala kang teamwork, so, yon kita na agad kung win or lose yung inyong objective, kung isasalba nyo ba yung inyong mission. What are the objectives of the military discipline? So, first is unit efficiency in battle. Perform its roles correctly. Reaches its objectives. Accomplishes its assigned mission. And help other unit to accomplish their mission. So, allow me to use this illustration as best example ng military discipline. So, last year, nung normal pa yung, pa yung pasok, so every training day, nagkakaroon ng competition sa drills. Say, for example, this training day, ang ituturo ay harap sa kanan, harap sa likod, harap sa kaliwa. So, bibigyan lamang ng one hour para mag-practice, aralin, and then after that, ay ipepresent na. So, dito talaga masusubok yung military discipline ng bawat isa. Disiplina na aralin yung certain uh, drills sa given time na ito. And then, ipe-perform na siya. So, kapag hindi ka nakaisa, and then, yun, pangita na yung, yung marka nyo ay babagsak. Kung baga, pag ginalingan nyo lahat, mataas ang marka. Pero kapag may isang pumalya, so sa pagbaba ng marka. So, dun po makikita talaga yung tinatawag na military discipline, and then, the word teamwork. Next, so let's talk about the three ways on how to create the climate of discipline. So first one is true training. Next is true judicious use of punishment and reward. And last one is instilling a sense of confidence and responsibility. So paano nga ba nagkakaroon ng disiplina sa tatlong nabanggit na yon? So let's see. Isa-isahin natin. So, first one is training. So, ito yung pagsasanay sa'yo na gawin ng isang bagay na to. Kung baga, iti-train, papaulit-ulitin, hanggang sa masanay ka na, nang yun lagi ang ginagawa mo. Kasi nga, yun na. Paulit-ulit. So, say for example is uh, the 7 a.m. rule class. So, dahil nakaset yon sa military, no Filipino time, 7 a.m. rule is 7 a.m. rule. So, that's it. And then, number two, so, paano nagkakaroon ng disiplina? Uh, judicious use of punishment and reward. Actually, ito ay napaka-effective, lalo na sa punishment. So, say for example, ulit, yung pagpasok ng 7 a.m. So, 
Uh, with the use of punishment, kapag na-late, so ang kataasan na naman, hindi ko naman sila pinaparusahan. Ano? So, ang kataasan na doon ay papakantahin ko ng hukbong dagat. So, dahil sila ay medyo nahihiya, so yun, kumbaga nagkakaroon sila ng disiplina to come early. And the next one is the instilling a sense of responsibility and confidence. Ito naman yung higher way, kung paano, higher way ng pag instill ng discipline. So, ito yung ipaparealize mo na ito talaga yung dapat gawin, kaya ito ang gagawin mo. Kung baga gagawin mo ito, hindi dahil sa sinabi ng iba, but then gusto mo talagang gawin ito. Next, let's talk about the military courtesy. Military courtesy is the written, officially prescribed code of department for members of the military establishment. So, courtesy in Tagalog is paggalang. So, military courtesy is very important in military. So, ito yung paggalang sa mas nakakataas sa iyo at pagsunod sa kanilang utos. So, one way to express courtesy toward one another is the salute. So, sabi nga, salute is the most important and most common form of all military courtesies. So, paano nga bang sumaludo? Here are the steps on how to salute properly. First, the forearm should be inclined 45 degrees. Two, the tip of the forefinger should be slightly touching above the eyebrow of the right eye. The thumb and fingers must be extended and joined. Number three, the upper arm is parallel to the deck with elbow forward. Four, hand and wrist in a straight line. And lastly, the palm is slightly inward. So, ganito lang yan kasimple. So, first one, so yung inyong kamay ay joint. I-joint nyo lang and then tuwid. And then yung gitnang daliri nyo ay itatouch nyo dun sa dulo na kilay. So, once again, ito pong gitna. Ayan, itatouch sa kilay. And then, that's it. 45 degrees. Tuwid. Then, chin up, chest out. Level. So, yan. Hugay kamay, baba kamay. So, try nyo lang hanggang sa makuha nyo na. At this point, let's talk about those who are entitled to salute. First one, the national flag and national anthem. Next, commissioned officers of the armed forces of the Philippines. Next, Civilian high officials or foreign dignitaries during military honors rendered for them. And lastly, officers of the Coast Guard and Judetic Survey and the Public Service when they are serving with the AFP. So next, so let's talk about when to salute. So kailan nga ba tayo sumasaludo? So normally, ang saludo ay form po ng greetings. So good morning ma'am, good afternoon ma'am. So lagi pong may saludo. Actually, yun yung main reason kung bakit sumasaludo. So, next one is kapag naman nagre-report and also aboard, ashore, overtaking a senior, and then seniority unknown. Kailan naman dapat hindi sumaludo? So, let's talk about when not to salute. First, when troops are at work. Next, outdoors. See? Indoor is except when reporting. Next, when carrying articles with both hands or being so occupied as to make saluting impracticable. Lastly, let's talk about the AFP enlisted ranks. So let's have the AFP enlisted ranks for Philippine Army, Philippine Air Force, Philippine Marine Corps. So kung mapapansin nyo, pare-pareho lang sila. Ito yung hierarchy ng ranggo from highest to lowest. So let's have... Again, for Philippine Army, Philippine Air Force, Philippine Marine Corps, ang pinakamataas ay General, followed by Lieutenant General. Then, Major General, Brigadier General, Commander, Lieutenant Commander, Major, Captain, First Lieutenant, Second Lieutenant. And then, kay Philippine Navy naman, ang pinakamataas ay Admiral, followed by Vice Admiral, Rear Admiral, Commodore, Captain, Commander, Lieutenant Commander, Lieutenant Senior Grade, 
Lieutenant Junior Grade, and Ensign. So that's it. That will be the end of this topic, military courtesy and discipline. I hope you learned something. Good day. God bless.